My name's John Kelly, or Johnny Kelly, and uh, I'm from Ballybrick. And uh, <laughs> that's about <laughs> I'm all all north now. <laughs> but uh, it started when all the rest of us were all knocking about the books and that as youngsters or never you come to be of any age. And uh, if you got a chance from when you were about 14 or that, you used to be down helping with the salmon fishing especially. You had to carry water, bottles of water for the fishermen, which the well was over in Greencastle at that time. And uh, then if it come to the end of the season, a lot of them uh, used to what they call clocked. That's they wouldn't go out because there wasn't enough there for them. So you would get a pier head jump. Uh, and that's the way you carried on to and the end. You were experienced enough for them to take you. Now <laughs> you're 14 or 15. And by I was uh, about, about 47, I would say. I, I was 12 and 45. About a couple of years after that, before you'd be 14 or running about. But you gathered birdies and you lifted corn and you hunted cattle and you. anything is everything you had to do. My father was at about a farming now. But uh, me and my brother were more or less. You had to do what you were told. <laughs> he went to see deep water for years too, and then he bought a boat and took her from the east coast of England over here and started off. And fished for a few years, and then I come back from sea, and we used to start up. And, well, in about f uh, about uh, seventy or that. These are years I'm not really sure of it now, but we, he bought a bigger boat then. And then a few years after that I bought a boat. And it went on like that to uh, about 85 or 86 and then I had a bad eye. Uh, one of my eyes went. Well, uh, I tried to fish after that but you couldn't look into the one. You know, in them days, the window had to be open, you looking at it. So it used to fill with water, that eye, so I gradually stopped it. So, well, I don't know, but I had my time down at sea at that time. Like, I uh, used to get, see the coasted men all could get back for the salmon fishing on that. But if you're deep water, you were lucky. If you trip end it in time to get back here for the salmon season. Maybe it would happen every three or four years you might come. And after two or three coasters I went deep water for them going, as you know, and uh, went all over the world every place you went. Round the world <laughs> But my best runs were I've done seven years to New Zealand and Australia and Pacific Islands. That was the best runs. You got about five and a half to six months a round trip. You know, we load in England or the States or the continent and you went away through Panama or Suez with your cargo and discharged it either New Zealand or Australia. And then they started, you turned around then and loaded again for home. Oh well, out, going outward bound it was all machinery and general cargo. And as far as stuff and that was all machinery from the continent and the states. You took cars and you took this and that. And that, you went around a lot of ports to get that away. And then you had to start then. And 
Start then and load up again on your way back. It took about five and a half months, six months to do the round trip. But you usually done two or three before you come home. Like you, you come back and you could work back by the ship until uh, she was ready to sail again and then you went on the next trip on her. So then you were lucky sometimes you got back about May or June. So then you would <laughs> come home here to try to make your fortune at the salmon. But it was always, always over at the end of uh, September you had to take off again. <laughs> right, you wouldn't get doing it if you were married. Once I got married I had a swally anchor. <laughs> Well, they wouldn't have you doing that. I've been away for 18 months or that. <laughs> well, I'd done from 50 to 70. But there was periods like in between where I got home for maybe three or two or three months fishing in between. Like. And then there was a time we come back, I don't know right the years, we, there was something on about you had to have a ticket, a navigational ticket. So I remember we set for it and got it. But then I had to go back to sea afterwards again for a few years. So, well, it was good pay them times. Most of my time at sea, at deep water, and that, there was, it was 30 pounds a month. That's what you got, but you got your keep. And on a ship that you couldn't make another 30 pounds over time. <laughs> you didn't stay. You paid that or you got out of work. Well, I have been on a ship for two and a half years and another one for two years continuously. But most ships, they paid you off when you come back. And then you could either wait about till she was signing on again or you could go and get another. So that's usually. There was, if you got into a good line of shipping, you stayed. There was other old ships, uh, tramps that caught them at that time. They were, they were uh, hired out to big companies, and they big companies <laughs> sent you where they wouldn't go. <laughs> there were places you were, was nice places, and other places you wouldn't leave your dog. Ah, oh, well, I don't know. Where. The worst places, the worst runs I done was with sugar from Titan Islands in London to the first port we went to Suez and through Suez and then ports in the Red Sea. There was uh, Port Sudan and Jeddah. That's where the Mecca. That's the port for Mecca. <laughs> you didn't go very far ashore there. And there was no such thing as beer there, or that. If they got a bottle or an out empty can, everybody's lined up on deck and search, even on the ship. <laughs> but then you went on, we went on from there to India, and Bombay, and she went on from that. But we, our trouble, we used to get rid of the sugar, and the B and I boat would come and fill us up again. <laughs> We went down around Salon and we finished up there. I think we were six weeks there once we were straight. And she left there and she went to the east coast of West Africa of South Africa to Newton. New London I was uh, and she loaded grain there and we come home about nine or ten months. And when you signed on for two years, or when the ship come back to the UK. So, uh, talk about uh, day trips. <laughs> well, it was better than uh, fishing at that time because you got money and you got most of them you got fed on. Some of them wasn't great. Curry and rice, whenever you were hungry, whenever you could have down the curry and rice, you got a cockroach. 
Kako se je še vanil? Mora da bo če vzpres mit. And in the 70s was the time that it took off. People got better boats. Before that it was uh, half-deckers and rowing. And uh, you uh, had to go to get a boat of the BIM give boats, but I never got one of them. Uh, you had to have but I kicked behind me to get them at that time. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's about sales, isn't it? You just carried on. Then I got bought a boat and fished seven mostly and used to do angling and all this. Why, oh, them days they were mad about getting out to Derry and Belfast and all around them places they used to come for a day's angling, and then there was an angling festival here in September, but that all finished kind of now, so it used to be out every two or three times a week or a Sunday, and these works all had an angling club going. Nowadays with insurance and everything, you can't take people on a boat. It has to be insured, it has to have certain standards. Then times you could take nine or ten or a dozen people with you and no trouble. Now you'd have to be covered by insurance and whatnot. So it's a different lifestyle altogether. I mean, it has, has progressed to what the people done then, to what they're doing now. Like, you couldn't fathom it. I mean, you can leave down there now with radar and DECA and all the things, and you don't even have to open a window to look out. It's all on a screen. Then days, <laughs> you had to eyeball it the whole way. Which is far easier now. It used to be if uh, there come fog or something like that. Well, your fishing was over. You'd have to try to come home. Couldn't see the landmarks. But nowadays they go a hundred miles farther out than we went. There used to be fish closer in. <laughs> It used to be, even when I come back here for start, if you got ten boxes of fish for your day, you had a wage, you had a good enough wage. Now, ten boxes wouldn't buy the diesel. So, whether it's progress or not, I don't sh not sure. No, that's what stopped me more or less was, what do they call it, a retina? fell off the back of it. And I was got it on, my heavens got my sight back. Grave sight yet. In them days in Australia and New Zealand, you used to get maybe two weeks in a port, or a week in a port, or ten days in a port. This was discharging and loading. And, yeah, I'd fire too many friends. The only, they had only sub you what, they, what you could afford. They kept your uh, uh, insurance and all that out of it, that you couldn't touch it. Oh aye, you got a sub and you went ashore with it. A lot of places, well the states, that was useless for getting a sub because the dollars was too much for you. <laughs> you wouldn't even hardly get enough to get a haircut. Always had to see it used to take a month to get home. Thirty days you always had that month to pay off with. <laughs> you couldn't sub on your overtime either, nor your Sundays at sea. <laughs> so you had you had something to pay off with. But uh, uh, there used to be another thing out there on a lot of ports that was what they called shore pay. That's there wasn't enough dockers to load the ship. Same as with butter or wool or stuff like that.
that and the crew used to get money, they used to be employed to do it. I remember once being on a ship and the, I was sent to drive the work for the crane for the, the stevedore, not the stevedores, the, no, the men that carpenters. And I remember there was one night and I didn't do hardly anything and I was nine pound. <laughs> But I don't know a lot of times, but I mean, that's the kind of, that's the money you spent there. If you got your pay, there was no good in taking it home with you. There was money you got extra. <laughs> Some of the boys wouldn't work because they couldn't get it spent. Oh, that's it. But there's a, everybody about here, there's other men here, done the same as me. There are quite a few of them. Still knocking about. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no such thing as leaving now than going to Belfast or going to London or that. To the, there used to be a pool where you went to look for your job. People wouldn't, wouldn't want to be away from home for a year or two at the time. It used to be a relief to get away up the road. Never yet. <laughs> your time done. It was a better life than probably a lot of people would have had. I got on well with everybody and there wasn't a ship I was on or wasn't asked back on. So. There you are. <laughs>